Hello, this is Gray Hughes. I am re-uploading the personal paranormal story called Begone Shadow Man. It's one of my best videos that I've made on YouTube, yet YouTube put it in some weird track where nobody was being notified that it existed. All right. Now, I also had to change the channel that I created for the personal paranormal stories so i'll put the new channel in the description the other channel wasn't syncing up with my other channel and something went wrong with it so i just thought you know what and there's no help on you on google or youtube about it so i just decided i'll create a new one and it's new, it's early on so it's not that big a deal so if you can go to that channel and subscribe that would be great it's going to be in the description of the video all right, so without further ado, let's start the video on this episode of Personal Paranormal, episode number two, Begone Shadow Man. That made my, my hair stand up. I was, I was like I saw something. Hello, this is Gray Hughes. Thank you for joining me today. This is a new episode of Personal Paranormal. This is episode number two, titled Begone Shadow Man, experienced by Paul Yoler. Now, Paul is a member of the Facebook group Personal Paranormal, where he told his story like so many others, and I create a folder for each story and we chat about it back and forth he uploads images people will upload their images for their story and then i create a folder and then we do an interview and then i create a documentary like video of their personal paranormal story okay so let's get started on this episode of personal paranormal with paul yoler all right well um Basically, I, uh, I guess I, I consider myself just kind of an average, everyday guy, you know, regular job, wife, two kids, dog, or had a dog. She's, she's passed away now. Um, and I never really gave too much thought into paranormal-type activities and stuff. Um, I kind of attend to church infrequently, um, you know, mainly Easter, Christmas Day service, or... or day before um just just the holidays and stuff i guess my story would start really with um saying the house that i'm still currently in uh we bought it in july of 2013 to my knowledge i believe it was built in 67 it may have been 69 i didn't actually go and check but uh i know it only had two previous owners the the, the original owners um from the 60s and then the people that we purchased the house from in, in uh, July of 2013. Hey, Paul, do you know any history regarding this house? Um, well, yeah, according to my neighbor, the, the original owner, he was a, a botanist and worked for Zoo Atlanta. So he was responsible for, for I guess, all the, the crazy trees and plants and stuff that was there. Um, I don't know if it's still there now, but uh, at least back then, he, he did that. And I will say, too, that in our backyard, we do have uh, quite a few crazy uh, trees. There's some, I don't, I don't know the names of them, but I know that there's there's leaves on them that are bigger than my head. In the back of our house, there's, a, uh, I guess, uh, footprints from, from the people that, that originally bought the house. And it has, you know, mom and dad, three kids, a dog and a cat-like footprints in the concrete. And that's a 69. Um, I'm pretty sure again though that they had bought it a couple years before um so anyways when when we uh bought the house and we moved in pretty much immediately i'd say two or three days once we moved in i started hearing just kind of strange noises um and i'll preface this with saying before we moved here it, we lived in a brand new townhome and i never really had to deal or mess with anything in the houses before um but uh, some of the strange things that we would see or hear, I guess I'll start with hearing, 
in the, the house was what sounded pretty much like human type footsteps on our roof the house does have an attic it's small it's a kind of a ranch style house so it's pretty loud um there was a couple times too that uh my wife was even like that sounds like there's something on the roof go and check it out uh i have looked in the crawl spaces i've looked in the attic and then i've even taken the flashlight and gone outside in the middle of the night sometimes and shined it up in the the roof to see you know this giant possum or something crawling on the roof but uh would never see anything uh other times i would hear coming like our, our hallway just like the the floor it would almost sound like someone's walking but not like thumps it'd just be kind of like the wood would kind of snap and pop um but it would be like two or three and it would get like closer almost like it coming down a line towards you there'd be multiple times where you know we were just sitting down watching tv or or i am i'm a night owl and i've watched a lot of tv but uh you hear just like you know pop 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 and it would kind of get or squeak pop whatever and it would kind of get louder almost like someone's walking down the hallway basically like a creaky Tr- floor sound right yeah yeah and you know i've always been skeptical like i said so I, I would chalk that up to being you know hardwood floors it's they're old expanding contracting as you know it's hot in the summertime and you got the air going inside the house so it's, it's going to make some noise so that's always pretty much happened from when we moved in throughout uh my experiences then i guess i would say probably about a year and a half later right around 2015 we had a dog the whole time too and she would always stay downstairs um she was an english bulldog and i guess they're slower kind of dogs they don't like to go up and down the stairs and my daughter's bedroom's downstairs so she just hang out down there all the time but her her room was pretty much like the kids playroom and just out of the blue she started barking and she would bark at night and i'd go downstairs and she wouldn't be at the steps she could kind of come and go if she wanted to or she can go into my daughter's room but she would always be kind of looking at this wall next to a window and she would just bark so i'd always get her to stop and probably once a week maybe sometimes twice a week that would happen most of the time it was at night too there would be sometimes where it would be during the day but i'd say 90 percent of the time it happened at night so I'd always run downstairs, try to get her to stop because I didn't want her to wake my daughter up. Never really thought too much of that at the time. I kind of just thought, oh, well, maybe, you know, she is starting to get a little old. Bulldogs only have like an eight-year life expectancy. Or maybe there's, since it is kind of the basement or a little bit below ground, maybe she's hearing something inside the wall squeaking or something. I don't know. Um, but I, 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 you know, it, was, it was strange, but it was nothing that really still alarmed me too much. That would keep happening. So every once in a while, sounding like something was on the roof, more like louder thuds would happen, and the pops and stuff would still happen all the time with the with the heartbeats. Then one day, uh, I, I want to say I'm pretty sure it was was in the fall time. Uh, so but she was barking, and I, I went downstairs check on her, and we have kind of a little L shaped couch down there. And there's some pillows on it. It's like a, uh, well, like a big pillow, a small pillow, a big pillow, a small pillow that kind of goes around it. And the pillows were on the ground. So I was like, oh, she was on the couch and knocked them off. And now she's barking. She wants to play. She wasn't really like jumping around or nothing much. But, uh, you know, I was like, all right, play with you, play with her for a little bit. And then put the pillows back up. Now, like I said, the way they're set up, it's it's like a big pillow and a small pillow, a big pillow, a small pillow. And the big pillows are in the back and then a the little small pillows on the front of it, kind of holding it back. So once I put them all back, and then I pretty much almost right away, I put it back, put the little pillow on top of the big. I turned to go back out of the room, and it's like as soon as I took one step, the white pillow had like hit me in the back of the calf. And it, uh, it was, it was, it was a little weird. I, I did feel kind of eerie because I was like trying to play it back in my mind. You know, did I put them on differently or did I just barely put it on? Was I in a rush and a turn? But it was like, no, I had them on there the right way. And it's strange that the bigger one would like sl- basically slide out. So I could explain it because the, the little pillow was still on the couch. Um, 
like slide out and, and, and be on the ground. So I don't, I don't know. It was, it was, it was weird for sure. So after that had happened, nothing else really happened for a while. Um, still the dog barking at the wall sometimes at night still me going down there still every once in a while noises on the roof and cracks but that was that was pretty much it uh it was quiet for a while uh, otherwise um but then the 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 biggest and the strangest thing happened fall again uh i want to say october november ish 2016 Uh, and that was the first time i had seen something I was up late at night yeah, like the usual I'm watching all kinds of stuff our our den kind of TV room is kind of it's like sunken in so I, I was watching TV I fell asleep on the couch directly behind I guess I should say directly behind um, the couch is an elevated area and that's where our kitchen is and then it goes back off into the rest of the house um, like a typical ranch with long hallway doors off a of beach, you know, area. Um, so I'm, I'm asleep. I wake up because I hear what sounds like steps and pops again. And I'm like, I, I, I'm like somebody's walking down the hallway. TV's still on. And I, I see just to the left of the TV on the wall, like a, a very tall, dark shadow. Looks like just a regular person shadow and I'm still you know somewhat asleep but it's definitely there close to the TV and it's right there I see it I stand up and I turn and look behind me towards the kitchen to see all right my wife's probably walking down the hallway because many times she'll come in and she'll say hey wake up and come to bed um, but there was nobody there so I turned back like what, what what was that? And I still see the shadow, but now it's moving over to the left, like like a sh- normal person's shadow would be walking, and it's going to the left, and it just kind of disappears into the corner. It's almost like it just like walked into the corner, and when it went to the corner, it didn't then project onto the, the sidewall. It just oh, kind of went wow. into the corner and was gone. <laughs> now, was the shadow's head on the ceiling at all, or just uh, on the wall a little bit above the TV of the? Show? It was it was on the wall of probably a foot and a half above the TV. I mean, it seems, if I were to guesstimate a height here, maybe maybe nine foot in total. Wow. And the feet were right on the wall, too. And the head was, so basically just from the ground almost all the way to the ceiling, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like a, a, a tall, slender shadow, almost like if you were to have a light source at your back and look at your shadow i mean it's like it's taller right. than you are but but it yeah. fit right onto uh, the wall though there's no ceiling action and no ground action. no huh. correct yeah. correct um so yeah that that's uh that made my my hair stand up i was i was like i saw something so i was like okay was was somebody at my my side door no, the blinds are shut. Let me turn on the lights outside. Let me look. Is anybody outside? Well, if the lights are off, then why am I seeing it? Why did I see a shadow? Was somebody else up? Did one of the kids get up? So I, I was up pretty much the rest of the night looking, trying to duplicate what I had just seen. Like, where the hell did that come from? What? <laughs> where was this light <laughs> that would make something right there? Yeah. I, like, even still, like, if I put my hand out, I almost feel like my fingers want to start shaking a little bit. It was, it was definitely a strange experience and I and I didn't tell my wife about it um I was like you know she's gonna be like you're just keeping your ass up at night and you're probably watching something and (laughs) it got in your head I don't know but uh I I you know I stand by I definitely saw something and and it was it was strange for sure um after that again a little bit of time went by without anything happening it's uh was probably three, two, three, maybe even longer. I don't know. That's why I'm 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 hesitant to put dates and stuff on things because I don't want to like misspeak. Probably February, maybe January time frame, of 2016. Oh no no, 2017. The dog was barking again, and so went down 
steps. I took about three or four steps down. And that is, we, I should say too, we keep a light on down there for her because she likes to have a light on. So I, I take a couple steps down the stairs and I see basically just to the side and moving pretty fast, like downwards, almost like towards the ground, like something is moving away from the stairs a shadow again that looks like a person and then like directly like as soon as the one kind of goes down there's like a second that kind of like starts up again and goes down um almost if like like a car's headlights hit something and you see like uh see like a shadow move and then that second headlight hits it and you see that shadow move again it kind of looked like that but they both kind of went to the left and down in towards the wall or towards the floor so as soon as i saw that and and still looked definitively to me like a person's silhouette <laughs> i stopped and was like you know hell no i'm not dealing with this again and it's, it's daylight i'm seeing you know crazy things here i'm, I'm not going downstairs wow so at that I, landing you can see that landing area and there's stairs that go to the right and left right i can't tell yeah to the that. right is my daughter's it's like it's like a little it's like a little mud room area and then it's my daughter's room and then the bathroom and then to the left is just a big playroom and laundry room right and so they the shadows both went down to the left side yes and we're and then and they too did not hit the floor or the ceiling they were just on the wall right yeah and on the wall to the to the left of like our our window and right. it kind of looked like it went they kind of looked like they, they were like sinking into the floor, kind of like almost like something was walking away from the stairs. Like if, if something was at that corner of the stairs and, and mm. walking away and around that corner, it just okay. kind of went yeah. smaller down real fast. But, but only on the wall though, right? Like kind yes. of like what, yeah. like what it did in the living room. It went into the corner, but not on the other wall. These ones went right. down below, but not on the floor. That's kind of, that's weird. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so, uh it it uh it shook me up enough to where it's like you know <laughs> to I talk I say like, sorry precious you're on your own uh, I came back up the stairs shut the door and uh, I was like you know I, I gotta I gotta talk to my mom about this and uh, she's a very religious lady she's a member of the church it's been going all the time and I think that might also be kind of a reason why I kind of to some extent rejected going all the time because she'd always you know we're going to go we're going to go we're going to do this and uh but i was like you know i think you need to tell her you know so i was like called her up mom what are you doing <laughs> hey let me talk to you i've been seeing and hearing things and it kind of freaked me out a little bit and you know, she's pretty nonchalantly just kind of gave me the whole sounds like you know you got some evil spirits and stuff in your house and sometimes if you if you listening to or doing certain things or the people that had the house before you or even the people prior to that or whatever if some things have ever happened in that house it can open doorways and she she started getting into it all. um anyways the the bottom line of it all was she was like i'm gonna come over and bless your house and she showed up had a little uh vial of anointing oil and she went around to the, the doors of the house and you know, touched the top and the bottom with the oil on her finger and then went into the, the house went to each room and prayed and basically rebuked the evil spirits out and i felt calm about it and i don't know if you know, it's just kind of a son being like hey mom's here to help but i felt good um and and ever since then nothing's happened again so no more roof so, thuds no thuds on the roof no no creaking no. on the floor that's unexpected or anything like that right? huh. yeah yeah wow. so that's uh that's 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 changed my outlook on things a lot i uh you know my wife and i and our kids we we go to church every sunday now um and I'm sure maybe somebody that might be listening to this might roll their eyes and, and say there's still logical explanations for everything. But this is just for me. This is what worked for me. This is how I felt. And this is, you know, something that opened my eyes. And there's there's things out there and in this world and, and other realms or whatever you want to call it that is there. And it's true. And we can't explain what 
this is something that happened to me and you know, I believe it. Yeah, the thing is, is it's the people who actually witness these things that they'll always know. But it's so fantastical for the rest of us who haven't witnessed it that it's hard to believe. But the thing is, this, these things really happen to people, and that's why I thought it'd be interesting to start letting people tell their stories and see if there's some overlaps and things that are some commonalities. And uh, wow, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm interested in hearing what other people have. Um, you know, and like I said, I mean, there's some people that in in the the group, the Facebook group, that you know, they said that they're hearing things or that they're seeing things in the woods and stuff, and I'm no longer a person that's going to judge somebody. I mean, there's always going to be people that, that, that try to like say, you know, this is the rationale behind it, or this is the reason why this happens. And it may be true, but I'm not the expert. And I'm, I just want to hear other people's stories. And like you said, see if there is a commonality and see what also may relate to me. Yeah, now I will be somebody who say, if they say, see a face <laughs> in the grave, if they see a face in the grain of wood, I'm going to <laughs> rebuke it. Or, you know, I am going to not allow it because I'm looking at it. I see the face they're talking about, but it's literally just looks like a face in wood, but it's not the killer. Okay. So, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people have, have a habit of seeing faces. That is true. Right. Well, I appreciate you coming on and telling your story. And, thank you. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Well, there you have it. That is the second episode of Personal Paranormal, Begone Shadow Man, Experience by Paul Yoler. I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I did. When I was done making the episode and done interviewing Paul, I had a sense that he actually did experience what the video was about. He actually experienced it. And I find that really interesting. Okay, now if you'd like to support my channel, please do so using the links in the description, PayPal, or Patreon. And when I do live videos, you can always contribute using Super Chat. I really appreciate all of your support. Okay, so this is the second episode, and until the third episode's out, everybody, be safe out there.